why employ audio specialists to create your audio ad when AI could do it for free? I'm Matt Hopper, co-founder and creative director of audio agency Trisonic, and this is our podcast Tripod. I've been creating audio ads for over 25 years, and with my guests Debbie Dillon and Kieran Murphy, we explore the role of AI in audio advertising. But first, let's hear what it's capable of today. Ready to escape the ordinary? Explore the world beyond the beaten track with Trek Holidays. Immerse yourself in lush jungles, uncover hidden waterfalls, and connect with vibrant cultures like never before. From majestic mountains to untouched beaches, our handpicked destinations will leave you breathless. Book now at trekholidays.com and get 10% off. Unleash your inner adventurer today. That ad there was created without any human intervention at all. It was created entirely by artificial intelligence. Should we be using AI? Will it help us? Is it our enemy? Uh, Discuss. I think it's inevitable that AI is coming and AI is going to get better. I mean, that was, it was a passable radio ad. I think it lacked empathy, emotion. It was very functional. I don't know I think if people aren't listening 100%, if it's just going on in the background, it would just wash over them. Um, But I think the time is coming when AI will be believable and sound to the average listener, which after all is who we're speaking to. We aren't communicating necessarily with a world full of audio experts, but your average radio listener would go, yeah, that's fine. I understand that. They've they've given me the information that I want. And I think the time will come when we have to to embrace it. Yeah, but... uh you know in terms of writing the thing isn't it th- isn't it our imperfections and quirks that make the scripts we write what they are yeah to me that just felt a bit flat i think is the word that i used listening to it though about three quarters of the way through i went oh i'm not listening to it and you had asked me to listen to it <laughs> and i was already not listening to it um so i think yeah you do need to bring those human touches through um you know, the, again, the, the music just cut out kind of at the end as well. There was there's no dynamics to it. There was nothing that was like kind of willing me to listen to it. But I think because AI has already come such a long way when it first started out and we were hearing um, r- computer generated reads, you could tell immediately that that was all spliced together. It, yeah, it was obvious. And now it's come so far that you Okay, that's not quite right, but it's almost there. The time is going to come when it when it when it gets there. Now, maybe it's to do with programming um, the, uh, the the computer to uh, understand emotion, human emotion, to second guess, uh, nuance, to do that kind of thing. Maybe that will come. Yes, there is a lot as a human that I can add to a script, to directing a voiceover, to reading a voiceover. But I think the time will come where. AI almost catches up with where we are. I guess I'm not the foremost expert, but I, if if all ads in my commercial block were AI, they're probably more likely to sound similar to one another. Yeah, um, they'll all start with a question. I can guarantee that. Oh, is that what the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. I've tried it. Okay. Every single one starts <laughs> with a question. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if... They are all AI, and you're that one lucky client who's decided, no, I'm going to go analog. Uh, you know, you're probably going to cut through a lot more. Um, that's. I think, uh, you know, it, it, you're right, Debbie, it is coming, and there's no denying that. I think there's probably a middle ground curated AI where us, the professionals, you know, improve what, AI does use it to our advantage as as you said earlier you know you sometimes use AI to kick off ideas in your head uh so so there are ways I think we can use it to our advantage without losing our jobs I think don't you yes I think so yeah yeah no no I I think so I I don't know whether it'll it, it it 
you you could run a whole load of AI ads back to back, but then we'd just be back into wallpaper territory, wouldn't we? And then who is going to, as you say, stand out above everybody else? Um, I think maybe effectiveness will will, will suffer. Um, maybe brand recognition and awareness will fall. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's all about creative standouts we've discussed. Um, and and certainly if there's a limitation to the number of voices you can use, you've lost your stand out there because if everybody's using AI, the same voice, well, there'll be a lot of voice clashes in, in ad breaks and, and that won't go down well at all. Also, it's just dawned on me as well, like where's the fun in that? Um, um, that might seem like a bit of a throwaway, like whimsical thing, but like I think to the vast majority of clients that I've worked with, they think making an advert for the radio is a fun and exciting thing and that's because it is actually i think it's creative and exciting and you get to kind of play around with lots of fun ideas if you're just kind of dumping all of that information into a chat bot to come out with an ad you've kind of like done your business a disservice you've you've not got as much out of that uh, as you as you could have done i think I think the other danger is that, um, as we've already seen with people like Morgan Freeman being recorded and put into a machine so that when he's gone, Darth Vader will live on. Um, the time is coming when people will be able to take a voiceover's reading of something and replicate it. So then you don't have any limit on the number of voiceovers you've got. You've got as many voiceovers as have ever been. You've been listening to Tripod, the podcast from audio media buying and creative agency Trisonic. Thanks for listening. For questions, feedback or information about audio advertising, just visit trisonic.co.uk. From me, Matt Hopper, it's bye for now. Bye for now.